The whole issue was, uh, it was messy. It was messy. Because Amnon, he tricked Tamar. He acted like he was ill. And he, she came to the house and tried to take care of him. And then he grabbed and he raped her. And Absalom thought that David did not do justice with Amnon raping Tamar. And Tamar and Absalom was from the same mother and father, where Amnon was born with a diff from a different mother. And so Absalom felt really no loyalty to his half-brother. He felt loyalty to what, he call, what we call his uh, complete sister. And at this time, Joab has brought Absalom back into the, uh, the area of Jerusalem where David was, but David didn't want to see Absalom. He did not want to uh, have company with Absalom. And so in 2 Samuel chapter 14, what happened was uh, Joab got an older lady to come and she gave a parable to David about she had two sons that fought and one of the sons were killed. And this is 2 Samuel chapter 14. One of the sons were killed and the people decided that they wanted to take the other son, try him and kill him. And she said, now that'll leave me without any son and my, my husband won't have any lineage. And so the, 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 the result was she brought that to the king and David said, well, don't worry about it. I'll send a decree to make sure that uh, no one harms the, head on your, harms the head of your son. And so what ended up happening was as she began to discuss further, she, she kind of said, she kind of led David down the road where he didn't expect to say, well, you have two sons, and one son killed the other one, and you won't have him coming for your presence. And this was set up by Joab. And so then David had instructed Joab, tell Absalom to come on back, but he shouldn't see my face. So he said, he can come back to the kingdom, and as long as, as, long as he go to his house and don't come into the palace, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him go, I'm going to let him live. But he said, if he come into the palace then I'm going to take action. And the funny thing about that, what I, what I find funny about that is you would think that the parents love all their children the same. Uh, but David was kind of weird in how he did things. He, he kind of, uh, Joab said at one point in time in the scripture, he said, you treat your enemies better than you do your friends. Because David was always in the forethought, well, I'm going to give him grace. I'm going to give him grace. I'm going to give him grace. Except when it was somebody close to him, then he say, oh, no, I'm going to come down hard on you. <laughs> so what ended up happening was uh, Absalom decided he's going to take David's throne. And then David, at this point in time, being older, uh, kind of unsure of himself because he, w he didn't have the same mindset where when the people said, the women said, Saul, Saul has slain his thousands and David is tens of thousands. That was a different mindset than this David here now that's dealing with Absalom. And so Ab Absalom, uh, he had David kind of flee the palace and get away and say, well, I'm going to trust God to uh, protect me. Heavy is the head the way as the crown. And uh, if you, if, especially if, if you are a husband and a father in a home, they're looking to you. I know we have these, you know, strong, independent, this, all that other, uh, fine, whatever. But <laughs> they're looking for that man to be the man. And they ain't looking for the man, they, they're not looking for the man to be the man when things are easy. They don't, they really feel don't need them when the things are easy. It's when those tough things happen. It's when a when a when a Amnon and Tamar situation come up. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking, but I'm saying in that type of situation, okay, you gotta make a decision, David. You know, or or a situation where Absalom decides he's gonna take out Amnon. Mm -hmm. You gotta make a decision, David. Mm -hmm. You know, you wear the crown. Yeah. And you can't you can't take off a run and say, God protect me, even though that's what he said in Psalm 3. <laughs> You, you have to be willing to weather that because this is a situation that David, he allowed to fester. He allowed to create, you know. And sometimes parents don't create the situation, but when they don't address it or hold it accountable, then they allow the situation to get bigger than it actually is. And we have to learn to, you know, 
let's stop it here, you know, and, and move forward. The scripture talks in the Bible multiple times about the woman that had the issue of blood. And she went from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. And nobody could heal her because only God can heal. The doctor can treat her. He can diagnose her. Amen. He can give her medication. But she, when she touched Jesus, she still had that issue. Because he stopped walking and said, somebody touch me. He said, who touched me? <laughs> and and virtual went out of the and, and the disciples said, well, Lord, there's a crowd of folk here. Everybody touch you. He said, no, no, no. This is a different touch. This is a touch of healing. This is not a regular touch. And the woman came to him and trembled, and she said, I did it. And he said, see, your faith has made you whole. Because she understood that, okay, I spent all my money with doctors, and I'm not getting any better. Maybe I ought to try Jesus. Maybe I ought to try the healer, the doctor of doctors. And so that's what she did, and she got her healing. And it's a testimony in the scripture. God, he spoke to them in reference to what he wanted them to do in alignment with what Moses was doing. He said, I didn't put y'all in charge. I put y'all to support. And <laughs> this thing with, with uh, Absalom, and sometimes people got to understand, there's a difference because people say, well, I got a call in your life. Well, the call could be to support. It don't mean that you wear the crown. Heavy is the head, then what? Where's the crown? There is, a, there is a gift in the Bible in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 called the gift of helps. Amen. Amen. That means a gift of support. That's what all helps mean is God, your gift is to support. Amen. And your, your crown, your glory is going to be on how well that person support. It's not, it's not going to be on you. Lee. It's, it's, it's going to be on you support. How well do you support? You giving, and then a lot of people that have that gift, and sometimes we minimize because we say, well, you're leaders and there's followers, and we can get away from that. No, 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 no. It's not about leaders and followers. It's about those who are called to do this versus those who are called to do that. And, and, and it's important because all our bodies, we have one head. But the head wouldn't exist without the neck, the shoulders. If all is left and you just had a head, you ain't got nothing. Amen. Amen. The head needs support members. Amen. 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 My mind can speak to my hands and say, pick up something. But if I don't have no hands, no matter how much my mind speak to my hands, ain't nothing going to happen. See, so every part of what God's body is, every part of the body of Christ is important. The Bible really tells us our roles. You know, Adam was supposed to be subject to God. Or man, since Christ is now on the scene, is supposed to be subject to Christ. That's our role. But the man is supposed to be the covering for the home. Amen. You know, and we say leader, we say leader, I don't say boss, but I say uh, the covering. You know, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord, which is interpreted, and that's in that scenario is kind of interpreted as her covering. And so the man is supposed to be the covering. The woman is supposed to be the help or the support for the covering. So let me let me get this straight. Your foundation, if you have a house, your foundation is God. Okay. Now upon that foundation, we can build pillars and we can build. Uh, uh, lay brick or whatever, okay, and that's your support. But then you got the roof, which is your covering. So you got the three components. You got your foundation, which is God, because the foundation, first of all, got to be stable and rock solid. You can't have a shaky or weak foundation. In fact, if you see these different shows that, that, that they do, like House Hunters or whatever, or these fix-up fix shows, and they discover there's a foundation thing, they stop everything. And they say, let's fix the foundation. Because no matter what you put on top of the foundation, if the foundation is bad, okay. it eventually is going gonna, gonna to eventually destroy the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way it's set up, if we look at it, the way it's set up, our foundation, which is God. Okay, then we have to build on it carefully. 
And then we can build the support beams and the pillars and the, and the masonry or whatever. And that's the help. That's help. That, that's, that's built on top of the house to make the house solid. But then you have to have a roof, which is the covering of the house. And so man is the covering. The woman is the support or the help me. And if everybody's in their role, things work pretty good. When they are not in their role, and, and we got to be careful because there are women that want to be in the role of covering, and then there are men that want to be in the role of support. And that's not the order that God put in place. Amen. And then a lot of them say, well, I don't even want God's foundation. So your foundation is shaky. Any foundation that's not of God is shaky. It's a, it's, a, it's a very flimsy foundation. And so if we look at it in that, in that viewpoint, we can kind of understand God's plan for us because we're his family. He created an earthly family. He created Adam out of the dust of the ground. He created the earth first. So I'm going to make an earth, then I'm going to make a man in earth, and I'm going to get a man the same autonomy that I have as God in heaven, but he's going to have the autonomy on earth. He's going to name all the creatures, rhinoceros, you're a rhinoceros. Oh, you're an elephant, you're an alligator. You're an eagle. You're a parrot. I mean, and then, and then when he took that man, put sleep, and he pulled out a rib, and he brought the woman to the man, got, and he said, oh, you, 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 are, you are a man, and you come from my side, so you are, you're a woman. You're a man with a womb. And so, and, and I'm, I'm not speculating. I'm saying this is kind of how I see God did it. And God said, okay, now, the Bible says male and female, he made them. So we all come from God. We all have roles. We got to go and learn to get in our roles. The problem with a lot of situations and stuff in marriages is people are not in their roles. And when they're not in their roles, then they're out of God's order. And when they're out of God's order, things don't work well. It just don't. They just, so, you know, and you say, well, you had to learn. You want to learn how to, sometimes we think that we've done bad or done wrong and the people that are hearing us, God allows them to hear good. I used this term last week. When, when you sing, my wife's a great singer. I thank God for her. I'm not. <laughs> I say, but when I sing, the Bible tells me to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I say, God has in heaven auto-tune. So when it leaves me, <laughs> by the time he hear it, <laughs> it sounds melodious. <laughs> Because he have all this, I'm an auto-tune Smith. <laughs> so Smith, I don't need auto-tune. She got it. I gave her that gift. But him, yeah, use auto-tune with him. Fix his voice. <laughs> so, and I was just, I was making light of what I'm saying is, uh, God created us for specific purposes and roles, and we, we just got to learn to get in and fit in and walk in them, and then we'll see the glory of God fall in our life. We'll see God's glory in almost everything we do and touch. God's glory will be there. God's glory will be there. God's glory will be there. And, and you don't have to really worry about it because you know God is with you. This is what happened when David, he, he ran from Absalom. That was against his character. He was a warrior. And you would say, well, he ran because he wouldn't kill his son. That ain't why he ran. He feared. That's what, that's what Psalm 3 said. He feared for his life. He ran and said, my enemies are coming at me. Verse 6, 2 Samuel 15, verse 6. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Hey man, he, he, the, the, the men begin to say, hey, that Absalom guy, he's a good guy. You know, I don't know what King David doing, but Absalom, you can go talk to him. You know, and, and sometimes people, and you have to be careful. And I, I found this, you know, a lot of times, I ain't going to say a lot, but sometimes there are preachers that are concerned about people coming in and take over the church. I'm saying, why worry about that stuff? Are they getting the people to follow? Why worry about that stuff? If they doubt in the God and you doubt in the God, you trust God. You don't worry about what folk, you can't worry about, it. life's too short. Amen, don't worry about that stuff. Whoever God sent to work with you, they're gonna work with you. It ain't nothing new in the Bible, it shows Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. There are people that come in and they're very charismatic, they're very, they're very, they're very seductive in how they do things, enticing, and they will, in effect, get people to come out to follow them. And I, I, it, it, it kind of bothers me when I see ministers and leaders and pastors afraid of this person, their gift, because, oh, yeah, they might split the church. Well, don't worry. You don't worry about that stuff. I mean, it, it's not your church. It's God's church. It's not your body. It's God's body. 
And people say, oh. And so, and, and we worry about the wrong things. And so it came to pass after 40 years, the Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. So he waited a long time. He was patient to come to the throne. He waited a long time. Sometimes people, they'll, they'll wait it out. <laughs> they'll wait it out to see what happened. For their servant vowed a vow, which I vow in Geshur, in Syria, saying, if the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve him. So he's telling, he's telling his father, yeah, I made a vow in Syria. I need to go back, and I need to fulfill that vow, and I ask for your permission to do that. That's what he's doing. But really, he has a different thought process. He's going to go away and set up his own little following and then try to take the kingdom. But we'll read out, we'll read out further here real quickly. It says, And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he rose and went to Hebron. And he did what a father did. Go do what you got to do. You know, at some point, 40 years, you're a grown man. Go do what you got to do. You know, right. you, you, know, you asked me because I'm the king, but really you are, you are, the, you are the point in your life where you, you have to make that decision. Imagery is powerful. Yes. Imagery is powerful. And when you say you look and you saw the past and they were so elegant, the past of wives, they were so elegant. And, yes. and sometimes in, in some of these uh, pastors, they, 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 they expressively show off all their earthly trappings, you know. Oh, I got this and we drive that and we fly this and I do that. And, and when people look at that and they see that, that image, those images are powerful because uh, people start saying, wow, I want that. Yes. And I said earlier, sometimes we don't know what the person did to get those things. That's true. And, true. and the wives look a certain way and, and, it, and it, looks, it looks a certain way, but when you really, when you really try to be dialed into God, not try, but when you doubt into God, there's going to be some times where there's a, it's going to be, I, I, I say this all the time, there's going to be a grind. Yes. And when, when you're in the grind, you still have to trust God. Mm-hmm. You can't just abandon God in the grind. And so, uh, but the imagery is powerful. It's like with Disney, and they show the white picket fist and the house and the nuclear family, husband, father, a wife and husband, uh, 2.3 kids, little dog named Spot, mm-hmm. you know. But I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I ain't never seen that in America. I've been on search 60 plus years. I have never seen that image. Only on TV. Only on TV. And so, you know, imagery is possible. I mean, it's, it's powerful. And, and, and those images, it sells people. It's like Absalom. Absalom was able to sell himself to the people because he said, I'm going to give you justice. You can talk to me. And then the Bible goes on to say Absalom was a very handsome man. He was like the most handsome man in all the, all the region in Jerusalem and stuff like that. So not only was he charismatic, he was, a, he was a good fellow to look at. I mean, he was pleasing to the eyes. And he had all this long flowing hair. And they said it was a big event. Every year he would cut his hair. That was the event. Absalom getting a haircut. And so, so you have those things. But really, as you walk, walk with God, learn with God, you'll say, if you're going to wear the crown, heavy is the head. Je- Jesus... Jesus went to the cross because he was going to wear the crown. See, a lot of people don't understand. People think, oh, he's king, king, lord, lord. Yeah, but before, before that, he was the lamb of God. Before he got the king, king, lord, lord, he had to be the lamb of sacrifice. So he went to the cross so he can have the crown. And they tried to give him to him. Remember the devil in the, in the temptation in the desert say, if you bow down and worship me, I give you all the kingdoms. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You should not tempt the Lord thy God. Because he understood that if I'm going to wear this crown, I got to wear it lawfully. And so that's the gist of it, you know. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to stop here. At this time, we're going to uh, uh, go over our announcements, then we'll be able to dismiss. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor, Sister Smith. Go ahead and stop that, stop that video. You stand up and stretch yourself if you like.
Amen. <coughs> Order of services Wednesday evening, 6 30 p.m. Bible class, Friday evening, 6 30 p.m. Uh, prayer service, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Christian education, Saturday 